Hello, this tutorial shows how we can publish widgets to Enterprise One users by adding them to a widget pane on an Enterprise One Compost page. JD Edwards Enterprise One widgets are an easy, no-code way to gather data and visualize it in graphical formats such as badges, meters, and charts. Because widgets get their input from orchestrations, the data can come from any source that an orchestration can access, including REST APIs from systems that are external to Enterprise One. This opens the door for many interesting opportunities to visualize data from Enterprise One and non-Enterprise One sources side by side. You can publish widgets to Enterprise One users by adding them to Enterprise One Compost pages, specifically a designer pane and beginning with Tools Release 9294, a widget pane. Additionally, badge type widgets behave similarly to OneView watch lists. They appear automatically on the watch list drop-down list on the Enterprise One web client and in the watch list panes. In this tutorial, as a Compost page designer, we will publish the widgets we created in the previous OBS to a new widget pane on an Enterprise One page. And as a user, we will enter inputs for the widgets and view the output. In this tutorial, we will create a new Enterprise One Compost page, create a new widget pane for each of the widgets created in the previous OBS. We will add some of the widgets more than once. Add widget default inputs as the page designer, change widget inputs as the user, and view a widget in the full screen mode. For further details on how to create the widgets, refer to the links in the description. First, let's create a new Enterprise One page with a single widget pane. Sign in to the Enterprise One web client, and from user menu, let's select Manage Content and click Compost Pages. Here, let's create a new page. Click the Create New Content icon and click Widget. Enter Past Due Orders in the Name field. Here, let's select Past Due Orders Badge Numeric Widget. Let us save this page and enter the name as Widget Paints. The new Enterprise One page is displayed with the single widget pane. Because the past due orders widget is a badge, it appears in the center of the pane and the pane occupies the entire page area. Now, let's add more widget panes to this page. Let's access the design page again and this time let's place the widget pane on the right. Enter the name as Most Ordered Item Quantity. Here, let's select the most ordered quantity batch numeric widget. Now, the page has two widget panes. Similarly, let's add the most ordered item name and POS by business unit widgets to the page. We can adjust the alignment of the widget panes as necessary. We can now see the four widget panes displayed on the Enterprise One page. Next, let's understand how we can add widgets that require inputs and how widgets allow us to provide default values for those inputs. Let's access the design mode and add a new widget pane to the page. In the name field, let's enter this name. From the widgets menu, Select Spend Analysis by Business Unit Chart Widget. 
this widget accepts an input value for the company. As the page designer, the widget configuration window enables us to provide a default value for that input for the users who will see this widget on the page. In the value field, let's enter 00200. We can add the same widget on a widget pane multiple times and set different inputs. For example, we can build a page with widgets for spend analysis for company 00200 and spend analysis for company 00300. The widget configuration window provides an option for us to override the title. Let's change the title here. The widget configuration window also provides an option to allow input, enabling the users to provide a different input for the widget. For this step, let's leave this option disabled. We will enable this option in a subsequent step. Let's now repeat the steps to add a second widget pane for the spend analysis by business unit widget. This time, in the input field, enter 00001 and enter a new title. The Enterprise One page now displays the new widgets. Here, as a page designer, we added widgets that allowed inputs and then we provided a default input. Next, let's add widgets that allow the user to provide inputs. In this way, we can publish a single widget on a page and users can customize that widget for themselves. For example, by providing a relevant business unit or work center or a date range for filtering. Each user will see the same widget, but with different data. Let's access the design page and add a new widget pane. Let's enter the name as temperature. Select the temperature meter widget. This widget accepts an input value for grid points. This input is a code used by the US National Weather Service to designate a geographic location. In the value field, let's enter the grid point for Denver, Colorado. Override and change the title to Denver Temperature. For this instance of the temperature meter, let's leave the Allow Input option disabled. Next, let's add another instance of the temperature meter widget and enable the allow input option. Here, leave the value field for grid points as blank. Enable the Override Title option and enter the new title as Your City Temperature. Drag the horizontal and vertical blue bars around the panes to align and size the panes evenly. Next, let's add the last widget pane and enter the name as City Forecast. Select the Detailed Forecast text box widget and enable the Allow Input option. Enable the Override Title option and change the title to Your City Forecast. Let's leave the value field for grid points blank. Now we can see the new widget panes that we added as a page designer. And as a page designer, we have enabled user input for these widgets. Next. Acting as a user, we will configure these two widgets with input for a location and change the titles accordingly. On the widget configuration window, enter a value from this table to configure grid points for a different city and override the title. Similarly, Let's add input to your city forecast widget and change the title.
As we can see, the results for the updated grid point value are now shown on the widgets. We can also view the widgets on the Enterprise One page in the pop-up mode. This mode provides clearer view of the details, especially with complicated charts. In this tutorial, we built an Enterprise One page exclusively with widget panes. But like any Enterprise One Composed page, it is possible to mix different content types to provide users with a rich, informative and dynamic user experience. For more information, visit us at learnjd.com. Thanks for watching.